Hello everyone, welcome to Tactic Imperialis and to today's video. Today is going to be another My Thoughts on one of the last videos I'm going to make at this desk. And today I wanted to talk about the UK Games Expo 2019 and Black Library Live. It was quite an interesting weekend of reveals. It wasn't exactly Warhammer Fest levels of grand scale, everything's coming out, look at all the shiny stuff. But a lot of interesting things came out, and whilst I was expecting that the Expo would be the event that took most of my interest, it ended up being the Black Library stuff. But I'll get to that as we go through the video. So I'll go through the Expo first, then through the Black Library preview, since that's the order in which they happened uh, chronologically. Uh, but it's a TLDR, if you just want to know what my thoughts are in general. Very interesting. I look forward to particularly all the new books, because my goodness, there's so many interesting things there that I just want to know more about all of it. Um, but on the model side, I think there's some really cool stuff there as well. Some good payoff for what we saw at Warhammer Fest or in other recent build-ups. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So let's dive in, shall we? As I say, we'll start off with the UK Games Expo, which... I heard mostly it was a pretty good event. Uh, I'm sure you can ask people who were actually there. I unfortunately wasn't uh, what they thought of it, but it seems like mostly a pretty good show um, as an event overall, not just for GW. So starting us off with Necromunda, we have the Palatine, or sorry, Palanite Enforcer. Sorry, Palatine is something that's much easier to say, but the Palanite Enforcers. These guys are kind of your law enforcement for Necromunda, as far as I'm aware. They're not quite on the level of the Arbitace. They're below the Arbitace in terms of power level. Uh, and they work for House Helmor uh, and as part of High Primus. So they're a pretty big deal and they've got some really interesting models. So this is the Paladite Enforcer gang or squad, if you like. And they're a really nice set of models. I think you could certainly do a lot of interesting things with them. I can see um, Tempesta Scion conversions. I think someone mentioned that online. And a bunch of other conversions that you can do with them. And I'm sure that if you're playing games outside of Warhammer, you get a lot of use out of them as well. Because they're kind of like generic sci-fi warriors without the genetic augmentations of the Astartes. So a really versatile kit. There's a lot of options in here. They talk about... I'm um, having bolt weapons, shock batons, all sorts of things. And if you're not that keyed on the yellow, which I can understand it can be a bit of a striking contrast for you. Not everyone's going to like the yellow color scheme. I've seen it done in different colors. Um, red was what I saw online. And that was a really nice palette swap. So you could easily change the colors if you don't like the particular paint scheme and get something really good out of them. Because sometimes GW doesn't always pick the best color scheme for its baseline armies. Right. Not all the time. So as they say, you get shock baton, shotguns, bolters, huge range of weapons for, they're calling them a patrol. Um, so they've been designed to capture the classic feel of the enforcers and modernize them to tie them into Necromunda. So, yeah, I think they've done a really good job with them. And there's a nice variety. You can, they sort of try and say that they've got design elements from other Imperial forces in there. And I can kind of see it. So I can sort of see some elements of, as I said, Tempesta Scions, uh, the armor and its sort of pared down nature. I don't know, could you make a Primaris Reaver shrunk down sort of analogy? Um, yeah, there's just a lot of nice little things with them. And I think if you're into Necromunda and playing the good guy seems like your, your cup of tea, I think you'll have a lot of fun with the Palanite Enforcers going forward. Will they be any good? I don't know. I don't play Necromunda. I'm in no position to pass judgment. Then we got onto some Blood Bowl. The expo in general was all about the specialist games. So we got to meet the Athelorn Avengers. Not the Athel Loren Avengers, the Athelorn Avengers. Athel Loren, by the way, being the ancestral home of the Wood Elves in Warhammer Fantasy, which is why I sort of expected that. But they shortened it to Athelorn, which is fine. So this is your Wood Elf team. We saw the first of those models at Warhammer Fest, uh, though not painted up and not actually in miniature, just in sort of a mock-up. And uh, they are quite a striking team, I think. Did every battle just have a yellow phase this week? Because that's two squads of things that have come out in exceptionally bright yellow. 
Personally, I'd have gone with a, a bit more of a, a classic Wood Elves, sort of greens and browns sort of colour scheme. But that's just me. And um, I think they're an interesting looking team. Not my favourites, uh, but I do quite like the models nonetheless. This is the one that we saw the preview for at Warhammer Fest. Uh, looks pretty good, all painted up. Again, yellow. Yellow is not for me. Sorry. Uh, they do say it's very customizable, lots of options, so good. Again, if you're into Blood Bowl, you're probably going to enjoy that quite a lot. Uh, and I know that there is the Dryad Star Player, which is available for Halfling and Wood Elf teams. So you've got some options there for your Star Players as well. Again, though, I've not played Blood Bowl. I can only sort of gauge what I think the models look like. And I think they look nice. I just wouldn't paint them yellow. That's all I'd say. And then we get into Warcry. Warcry has just been drip feeding us one warband after another without ever revealing what the game mechanics are which is a really bold move to not show us any rules previews or even any idea of how the game's gonna work they've just shown us models after models after models and i approve but i'm also kind of at the point where i really just want to know how the game works now and I can kind of wait on the models, but at the same time, the models look so awesome that I really want to know what the next Warband looks like. So it's a bit of a, ah, catch-22, what do I want? So, Warcry, we've already met um, three Warbands. The Iron Golems of Shaman, the Untamed Beasts of Gur, and the Splintered Fang of Gyron, who have been my personal favourites up to now. And now we have the Corvus Cabal, who come from Olgu, the Realm of Shadow. And these guys, you've probably seen them. Yeah, it's the Raven Boys and girls and other chaos devotees of whatever you so desire. Yeah, um, these models are interesting, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I really like what they're doing with Warcry. They're really taking what... Age of Sigmar is set up as its mythos and running it to its extreme. They're doing really cool, innovative designs with the forces of chaos. I already talked in the Warhammer Fest video about the Splintered Fang, the snaky Realm of Life warband, and I really like those models as well. But the Corvus Cabal are something else again. And coming from the Realm of Shadow, you can understand uh, perhaps why they go with all the dark colours. and they're, they're sort of a carrion hunter type cabal and that's how they worship chaos they got all the dark colors sort of blending with the mists of the shadows of all goo it really works for me i do like it and obviously i know there was probably at least six or seven people who made raven guard analogies and yes if you wanted to do something for raven guard then you could probably have some fun with these guys like particularly the champion i assume uh, the equivalent to the guy with the snake uh, coming around his arms. Then you've got this person who's got their massive crow raven wings, which is a really, really cool model. So, yeah, I like the Corvus Cabal. I do. And I think when they're actually painted up and look like that, they'll be really, really good. I just... I'm at the point now where I really want to know how Warcry is going to work. We've now seen four of the six Chaos Warbands... Plus, we know that I believe there are going to be, like, sub-factions, or sorry, other races that are going to be playable, judging by that big panoply of icons that went around the six chaos symbols. So, I'm very interested to see how the game works now, because Warcry... Where was Warcry announced? It was a while ago that Warcry was announced. It might have been Blood and Glory Adepticon? One of those two, I think? But it's been a long, long time now since Warcry was announced, and we still know next to nothing about it. So I really just want to know more about it. How does the game work? Is it like a direct analogy to Necromunda? How does it stand out on its own compared to AOS Skirmish, to Necromunda, uh, to Kill Team, and all of those things? How does it work? I just want to know now. But obviously the models are great and I can't wait to see what the rest of the Chaos Warbands look like. Um, so what roles have we had? We've had Metal, Beast, Life, Shadow. So that leaves Death, Fire and Light that we could get because we're not going to get any from Heavens. So Death, Fire and Light. I'm assuming we'll get one from Akshi and one from Shaiish. Though I'd love to see a Haishian Chaos Warband. One for the Realm of Light. Just so I can see what the Realm of Light's 
denizens kind of look like in preparation for when Teclis's elves and Ortyrian's elves get done. Because this is the first thing we've seen of anyone from the Realm of Shadow. This is the first people we've seen designed specifically to come from the Realm of Shadow. So, yeah, I want to see more. I do. But I also want to know how the rules work because I want to play it. So, hurry up, please. Get on with it. Next up, we have Blackstone Fortress, which is getting a new expansion, which is known as Escalation. So, in this case, it's not about uh, exploring to get stuff and find things and cut your way through the Chaos Forces. Now, you actually need to survive uh, because Malex, the Chaos Lord, has kind of got some control of some of the power and you need to deal with it. But it's not just a rules expansion. It's a full set of new models as well, including some models that you might be familiar with. So there's a few Chaos uh, followers here, some cultists. I think the one on the left is called a Firebrand. I'm not sure what the other sort of character cultist leader here is uh, in terms of name. It's a really cool design though. I really like both of these Chaos leader models. And the cultists themselves, well, they look fine. They're, they're Chaos cultists. What more can I say? Chaos has never really been my thing, you might have noticed. But we also get some new explorers. So these guys are from the, I think it was called, what well, they call it here, Combat Arena, which was a box game that came out in a very limited run in a few places a while ago. So we get a Rogue Trader, a new Primaris Psyker, a Crusader, a Tech Priest, and a Servitor. Where I assume the, no, the Servitor will work on its own, I'm sure. But yeah, these guys from Combat Arena came out a while ago. I didn't do a a video on these guys personally, uh, but I did talk about Adeptus Podcasters. And I do really like these models. The Rogue Trader in particular is a real favourite of mine. Uh, but the Primaris Psyker, I'm sure GSD the Cults players are chomping at the bit to get their hands on that. Uh, the Crusader might well slot in quite nicely with the new Adeptus Auroritas when they come out. More tech priest options is always great. And the Servitor, I'm sure there's many a conversion for Battle Automata or other things that you could do with that guy if you don't just want to play a basic Servitor in your game. So lots of cool stuff there. I think Blackstone Fortress is going to benefit a lot. Uh, I was also a few extra Traitor Garth models, uh, which I'm assuming is just these guys that we've already seen. But yeah, a nice mix of stuff, I would say. So that's the UK Games Expo. Uh, as I would say... Uh, a lot of specialist games stuff, so if you're not a specialist games player, and I'm not a specialist games player as a rule of thumb, I can understand why you probably would kind of gloss over that very, very quickly, but I'm always interested in Warcry because I want to know how Warcry works, and I'm always interested to see what they're doing with the specialist games, even if I'm not playing them myself. So, we'll say, very, very nice models, and I'm sure that if you're playing those games, you're going to have a lot of fun. I was hoping maybe we'd see a little bit of a teaser for Aeronautica Imperialis, since that was first teased at Warhammer Fest a couple of years. I guess it is a very, very soon after, and there's a lot going on right now. Contrast is about to come out, uh, so there's probably a bit of a focus in other places to not need to distract with things like Specialist Games on top of Contrast. Forbidden Power's just come out, and we know there's going to be plenty more going on very, very soon. So that's the expo. That's almost all of the miniatures for today. There is one more, and that came as part of the Black Library Live event for 2019. What an event this one was. So if you got to go to this seminar, then lucky, lucky you. This was, this has got some great stuff. So starting off top of the beam, we have Age of Sigmar with Gotrek or Gotrek Gerdesen. The dwarf who can't die is back again, and he's got a miniature. Now, I don't have a particular attachment to Gotrek and Felix. I never read them back in the day, but this model is fantastic. This model is awesome. I love the base, and I bet that you could do some awesome things with that base, even if you're not a dwarves player. He's got that Slayer aesthetic that fits in with the Fire Slayers. The axe looks amazing. Genuinely really a big fan of this Gotrek model, so huge thumbs up there, and I love the belt, which has got a very old school -y Duardin look, as opposed to being a Fire Slayer sort of look, uh, particularly with the extra trousers and all that stuff, it's a bit more practical than the Fire Slayers, so big thumbs up 
Gotrex model looks great, and I hope you get some rules to go along with it so that you can ally him in to your Fire Slayers or your Dispossessed, because good grief, he's a badass. But that's not all. We also get a new audio drama with the return of Brian Blessed, known as Blood of the Old World, done by David Geimer, who I know writes very good Sigmar lore. Um, so he's going to be going face to face with an enemy from his distant past. I wonder who that will be. Someone from the world that was, at least. Not sure who that. And we're also getting a full novel by Darius Hinks, known as Ghoul Slayer, staying with the theme. And Gotrek is going to Shaish. Uh, it says here that he's teaming up with his elven friend, uh, or elven bodyguard, compatriot, whatever. An elven assassin named Maladeth, who I presume is from the Shadowblades faction. And they're going to seek an audience with the undying King Nagash himself. So I think I know what the idea is. I've not heard Realm Slayer. I haven't really had time. But I think that he's going to get Felix. I'm assuming that this story is how Gotrek either gets Felix back or is set on the road to getting Felix back. Because Gotrek survived the world that was. So presumably Felix did too. And if he didn't, his soul would have probably come to rest in Shaish eventually, which means that Nagash will have at least some knowledge of it. So I look forward to seeing where that goes as a plot point, And I can't wait to see the return of Gotrek and Felix if they decide to go down that route. But having a dwarf working with an elf, as much as it's weird, I'm not against that either. We're also getting uh, the script version of Realm Slayer. So if you're not an audio drama person, then you can have a read of that if you prefer. And there's more. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There's so much fun stuff in this section. So, new Neferata novel by David Annandale, Dominion of Bones. Now, I've read a couple of Neferata shorts in my uh, in the collection of shorts I've got called Gods and Mortals. And Neferata is a... Well, she's horrible, but she's a badass. And David Annandale writes her really, really well. So... I think that will be really, really good. If you're into death and Neferata and that sort of thing, you'll really enjoy this. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Uh, the one, I, I do also recommend that short collection, by the way. Because <coughs> it's called Gods and Mortals. It's got a collection of really fabulous shorts and I highly recommend you read it. Uh, there's another one coming out. Um, and I keep forgetting the name of it. It's got an Achelian King on the cover. Uh, the Kelly King artwork for the Iron Death book. I can't remember its name for love the money, but I'm going to be getting that. But that's not the only Iron Death. Oh, no, 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 no. David Geimer's been busy. Yeah. Court of the Blind King. The fuck with this? Just, just... Wow. I don't actually recall who did that artwork but oh my days that artwork is utterly utterly beautiful genuinely wow 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 so we get an Ida death story a full fleshed out Ida death novel the court of the blind king i'm buying this i i I'm going to be fully honest, I'm a massive sort of geek for elves in Warhammer. It's like Sigmar and fantasy when it was fantasy. I've always been elves, as you will probably know for the fact I've done two seasons of Elven Hobby Projects. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm reading this. I, I just want to read this so much, yes. Um, and I'm sorry that I don't have the time to do Sigmar Law because someone commented on my Elven Adventure video. Uh, at the weekend saying that, why don't you do Sigmar Law? You're so enthusiastic about it. Yeah, I am. I'm really enthusiastic about it. I wish I had the time to do all the reading and do the videos alongside 40k stories. I just, I just don't. And it sucks and I'm sad. But I'm going to drink in all the lore that I can. And if this inspires something for my Ideneth army, then all the better. I, I just can't wait to read this. I just can't. I just can't. I want that novel now. <laughs> And we also have something that we'd seen before, uh, Gloom Spiked by Andy Clark. Uh, we saw this uh, mentioned in a, the Coming Soon page a while ago. I think that's coming out very, very soon, actually. And this is going to be very interesting because the Gloom Spite are another factor that I quite like. Uh, if I was going to play Destruction, it would either be Gloom Spite or Iron Jaws. Or why not both? Put them together. Why not? So 
I think that would be an interesting one to read, although I'm not sure if I'll buy it immediately, because, well, one, I've got a novel on the go, I've got the Hamilcar novel on the go, two, I've got Forbidden, forbidden Power to get around to, excuse me, and three, the Ideneth novel, four, I'm very, very busy, and five, I don't know how well the glue spite will translate to be sort of the protagonist, a full novel, I don't know. I want to read it and I'll hopefully get a chance to do so, but I'm not going to rush to buy this one, much as I am looking forward to reading it. We're also getting a tie-in novel for Warcry, an anthology, so you've got Josh Reynolds, Sarah Corkwell, um, and David Annandale, Ben Counter. Piece of Acclaim is a name I don't actually know, so looking forward to seeing their work. So that's going to explore presumably the six Chaos Warbands, that were the ones we've talked about already plus the two we haven't seen so yeah interested to see how that goes and i know chaos could be written really really well i read uh scourge of fate by robbie mcniven and that was a fascinating little read uh, there's a bunch of shorts in gods and mortals around chaos as well so yeah that could be a lot of fun and now we get to 40k so uh gaunt's ghost there is a incredible new edition of the sabbath world's crusade background book this copy table tome is a historical guide to the events of Gaunt's Ghost, detailing the long campaign to retake the Sabbath worlds from chaos, from its origins right up to the most recent battles detailed in the Anarch. Uh, it's massive, it's got uh, new stuff written by Dan Abnett, and yeah, this is pretty cool. I honestly never got around to reading Gaunt's Ghost. I read the very first one, uh, first and only, uh, but I've never read the rest of Gaunt's Ghost, and I've not read the Sabbath World stuff either. I just never really got round to it or had a, that much of an interest in doing it particularly. But still, lovely piece of artwork. Again, the GW art team is fantastic. So if you're a Gaunt's Ghost fan, enjoy. Now, this is probably the ones that affect me more. We're going into more Blood Angels, more Ultramarines, and Belisarius Core. So we've got two new Blood Angels novels, uh, the first being Mephiston City of Light from Darius Hinks. So I haven't had a chance to read um, the other two Mephiston novels, but I am roughly aware of what goes on in them, and they look like fun. And we're also getting uh, a sequel to The Devastation of Baal in Dante, Darkness of the Blood. So you've got uh, Dante was the original novel, then was The Devastation of Blood, which is a pseudo-sequel. And now you've got, oh, sorry, it's Devastation of Baal. And now you've got Darkness of the Blood, which hopefully will be after the Devastation of Baal when the Blood Angels have been reinforced and are out being the regents of the Dark Imperium. So I can't wait to read that. Um, from Devastation of Baal, I know Guy Haley writes Dante really, really well. So looking forward to that. And uh, Guy Haley's not done. We have a Belisarius Call novel, The Great Work. This novel is huge. So this is going to Sotha, runs the homeworld of the size of the Emperor, who then got eaten by Tyranids for the most part. And long before that, a key planet in an empire long forgotten. Some of you might remember that. It's called Imperium Secundus. Do keep up. So, we're getting a Belisarius Call novel. This is long overdue. Belisarius Call, particularly around the time of the fall of Cadia and Gathering Storm, was very much seen as a sort of a, a Gary stew. Oh, who's this guy? Why has he got all this power? Why is he doing all this nonsense? And then we got the Primaris Marines and all that nonsense with Gilliman, and it was like, oh my god, Belisarius Call, you stupid, you, what you doing here and all that nonsense? Granted, it's lessened over time and the blame has kind of gone on his brain, but Call came out of nowhere. And whilst he's been fleshed out a little bit in Wolf Spear and in the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex and all of those things, he's not had his own dedicated novel yet. Until now. And I cannot wait to read this. Mechanicus stories to me have always been fascinating. I've read the Gods of Mars series by Graham McNeil, I think it is. Uh, I've read uh, the Skitaria and Adeptus Mechanicus stories by Rob Sanders. Uh, and I'm sure I've got some other Mechanicus bits and bobs lying around. I found Mechanicus stories fascinating in many ways. And I, yeah, I need to read this. I mean, they say it has huge ramifications for the lore anyway. So I kind of need to read it so that I can keep up with Reblaze when he reads it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this novel. 
I think this is going to be very, very interesting. And it's important not just in universe for the law, but it's important for us to try and ground call in this universe. So hopefully we get to see his backstory as well as what's going on in the modern era and what it all means and all bringing it all together and all that stuff. So I hope we get that. So I look forward to the great work. I do indeed. We're also getting Knights of Macrag from Nick Kime, the Carter Sicarius novel about when he got lost. This is this was a, a sort of thing that came out of nowhere when uh, they reintroduced uh, the when well, we got to Eighth Edition and uh, the Ultramarines. Uh, sorry, the Space Marine Codex came out. Like, Sicarius went missing for a bit. Wait, what? Did he? What? Why? And he's back now. Okay, cool. We don't really know what happened. Now we're going to find out. That's important. Again, it's just about filling in the blanks. This is important stuff. So approve. Uh, we're getting a more esoteric book called Rites of Passage by Mike Brooks, uh, looking at a navigator house, lots of politics. Now, this is interesting. I love these sorts of stories uh, where you get to sort of see the inner workings of the Imperium and how it all fits together behind the battlefield. So I think this will be a really fascinating read. Uh, we're going to get a sequel uh, for Chris Wright, uh, Vaults of Terror, The Hollow Mountain, which is good. Uh, and John French is continuing the Horizid Wars and all that good stuff. I think we knew about the Hollow Mountain already. Um, we might have known about the Horizid War one as well. Either way, very cool art as always. Looks lovely. Approve. Uh, we're also getting a new Blackstone Fortress novel or two. The Beast Inside, an audio draw by Darius Hanks. And we've also got Vaults of Obsidian, a short story anthology. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, nice and fun if you're a Black Third Fortress fan. Uh, we also get a bit more information about the second series of paperback novellas uh, coming for Christmas. Ten novellas. I think I do remember this last year. Uh, was Auric Gods part of this? I can't remember. Uh, so we've got a few here. One called Wreck and Ruin, which is a Sororitas novel, I assume. Uh, Lords of the Storm, which looks like a brand new uh, Primaris chapter. We've got Thieves of Paradise, or sorry, Thieves Paradise. Nick Horth is another great AOS writer. Uh, I've read some of his stuff from Callis and Toll, and that stuff is fabulous. And we've also got The Measure of Iron uh, by, is that, I can't read that, Jamie, Jamie Chrysali. That looks like one of the Iron Golems from Warcry, so that will probably be a Warcry tie-in story, so awesome. The other six titles will be written by Graham Lyon, Denny Flowers, Thomas Parrott, Steve Lyons, Nate Crowley, and Graham McNeil is back for the first time long form since Crimson King. So welcome back, Graham McNeil. Good to see you again. I look forward to seeing some of this and hopefully there'll be some fun revelations that we can all dive into together. Uh, Warhammer Adventures, we finally get to see a little bit more about, well, not a lot, what we know about the next Warhammer Adventures series. So, Tau novel, Secrets of the Tau, uh, that could be really, really good because it has the chance to go behind the curtain of the Tau because you don't have to focus on them on the battlefield because you're seeing them through a civilian eye. This could actually have a lot of Tau lore revelations just sort of woven through it in a kid's book. So, of all the Warhammer Avengers stories so far, that's probably the one I want to read the most. Uh, we're also getting Forest of the Ancients of a Silver Death story. Cool, good to know. Uh, I think we had a Skaven story last time. I, I, I haven't really kept up with the AOS adventures quite so closely. Uh, Warhammer Horror is continuing on. So we've got The House of Night and Shade from David Allendale. The Castle of Blood from C.L. Werner. And in audio, Alec Worley will be uh, telling the tale of The Watcher in the Raid. Hmm, interesting. So, we don't really know anything about that, really, whether they're all 40k or Sigma tales. Still, interesting nonetheless, and I'm sure there'll be some very fun things if you're a horror reader. I've heard some good things about Warhammer Horror, so very, very good. Uh, a couple of tales from Necromunda. So, we've got uh, a Escher and Goliath battle called Terminal Overkill by Justin Hill. And then we've got Josh Reynolds... Uh, writing about Cal Jericho in Sinner's Bounty. That's, uh, that's a cool one. Although, I believe Cal Jericho is also spelt with a H, so um, I think someone made a joke about that online. I'm not sure. Uh, then we get 30k. So, 
at the time of recording, Solar War, I think, is just about out in paperback now. So everyone should be well on with the Solar War uh, and starting off the Siege of Terror. But it's not just going to be Siege of Terror stuff that we're getting for all 30k. First off, we have Chris Rate in Valdor Birth of the Imperium, which is set right at the end of the Unification Wars, as I recall. So it says here, um, it says a little detail, uh, his role in the formation of the Imperium, it's his origin story. So excellent. I, Valdor is an interesting character that I've always wanted to know more about because the Custodians have always been a sort of a mythical figure. So yep, approve, approve, approve. A few juicy hidden secrets about the Emperor and his plans. Yes, the Emperor would have confided in the Custodes. Oh, excuse me. So, I do look forward to that. Josh Reynolds is also back with a new tale for the Black Shields called The Broken Chain. Very, very nice if you've been keeping up with that mini series. And then this. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, 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 oh. Who drew this? Who drew this? Whoever did this, you are a genius. So this is the cover of the second Siege of Terror novel. It's called The Lost and the Damned. It's by Guy Haley. It's got Sanguinius. It's got the Sanguinary Guard. It's got the Defenders as they rally for terror. And all oh, this cover art is just, oh, it's beautiful. It's so good. Look at that Sanguinius. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Approve, 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 approve. And Solar War seems to have gone down pretty well for the most part. So I look forward to seeing what The Lost and the Damned brings. Uh, we also know the third novel we call The First Wall. That's by Gav Thorpe. And The First Wall, I'm assuming, is to do with the first sort of... Well, actually, can it be? The First Wall. I assume that was going to be the first sphere, as in like the first sphere of defences around Sol. But that was covered in the Solar War, I assume, since I think at the end of the Solar War... No, I won't talk about it because that'll be spoilers. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm assuming that's like the first shot of the Siege of Terror itself. Uh, whilst the Lost and the Damned will be all the preparation on Terror as Sanguinius prepares himself to die. Malkador maybe uh, braces himself for his own death on the Golden Throne. And everyone's just sort of waiting. It's now literally a minute to midnight. And then... Bong, off goes the clock with the first wall by Gav Thorpe. That's what I'm assuming anyway, I'm not sure yet. So yeah, there's a lot going on. We also have the Liber Chaotica is back uh, in a new version. So if you're a Chaos Lore nerd or just a Lore nerd in general, you might want that. 20th anniversary edition of Space Wolf. It's a very nice read. And some uh, new paperbacks for Titan Death, Old Earth and one of the Gotrek and Felix omnibuses. So, plenty, plenty, plenty going on at this, at this event. So yeah, that was the Black Library Live's uh, reveal stuff. And wow, what a set of reveals. We've got Ideneth novels, Gloomspite novels, a Godric and Felix reunion, potentially. We've got Belisarius Call. We've got uh, Dante and Mephiston post Baal. We've got the Adventures of Carter Sicarius when he got lost. We've got Constantine Valdor's origin story. The new Siege of Terror continuation stuff. There's so much good stuff coming from Black Library. And I don't have time to read it all and I'm sad. So yeah, well done Black Library, I approve. Also, I realise I've now talked for over half an hour about some specialist games and some books. So I'm going to stop now. So that has been my thoughts on the UK Games Expo and on Black Library Live. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about both events in the comments below. Are there any particular models or books that you're looking forward to most? Do let me know. I'm always interested to see what do you have to say. So in summary, I would just say very, very quickly, awesome set of reveals. Can't wait to see what comes next. Bring it on. Thank you very much for watching Tactica Imperialis. And I'll see you all again. Bye for now.